Well, how did you do? If you answered C, then you fell into the trap. The fact that the speed is constant does not make the acceleration zero. Acceleration isn't rate of change of speed, it's rate of change of velocity. And the velocity is changing direction continuously, so the acceleration is definitely not zero. And besides, this object is not going towards the center, it's going around the circle. And as always, instantaneous velocity is tangent to the path that the object follows. So it's tangent to the circle. Also, if the acceleration pointed in the direction of the velocity, then this object would be speeding up. But it isn't. It's going at constant speed. So it can't be d. And we've discussed the acceleration points in, not out. If it pointed out, then a little while later, this would not be heading this way to the left. It would be headed right. But no, its path right now is curving to the left. And so the acceleration has to be roughly that way. We're going to focus on cases where the object is moving at constant speed. For now, we'll look at varying speed in circular motion next lecture. But let me just remind you of something that you saw earlier in the course, and that's a useful way to decompose the acceleration vector when something is going around a corner and speeding up or slowing down. We saw that it's useful to decompose the acceleration vector into a parallel component and a perpendicular component. The parallel component is responsible for the object speeding up or slowing down, and it's the perpendicular component that's responsible for the object changing its direction of motion. So in our case, that perpendicular component is the component of the acceleration that points straight to the middle of the circle. As I usually do at the beginning of a new topic, I'm trying to stay as non-mathematical as I can. So we're not going to write down the magnitude of this acceleration yet. But there's a conclusion we can draw with very little effort. Think about this picture. At this particular moment, the acceleration is to the left, perpendicular to the velocity, as we've seen. Now, think about rotating the picture. Suppose we rotate the picture 90 degrees counterclockwise. So now it looks like this. But notice that nothing about the picture has changed. Because the object is moving about a circle at constant speed, and the circle looks the same no matter how you rotate it, that tells us that by symmetry, everything must be the same about every point around the circle. And so this is telling us that by symmetry, the magnitude of the acceleration has to be constant for any object moving around a circle at constant speed. Notice, I did not say that the acceleration is constant. The acceleration isn't constant. It's continuously changing direction. But its magnitude is constant. Now we can draw a further conclusion using things that we've seen before. The equation of motion still applies, and so as always, the vector sum of forces must be ma for the object. Well, we've seen that this acceleration points straight to the center of the circle if an object is going around a circle at constant speed, and that this acceleration magnitude is constant. And so in uniform circular motion, the vector sum of all the forces acting on the object must be straight to the center of the circle, and furthermore, the magnitude of the vector sum must be constant. Notice. There's no new special force that comes up because an object is going in a circle. We still have to identify forces in the usual way. Think about all the agents that can exert forces on the object that we're thinking about. What we know now, though, is that the vector sum of the forces has to be to the center of the circle in uniform circular motion. You may be puzzled by this because you've probably experienced going around a corner in a car and feeling like there's a force pushing outward on you, away from the center of the circle. So let's think about going around a corner in a car. And you've all experienced this. If you are in the car 
Then as you go around the corner, you feel as if you are thrown to the outside of the curve. Now, as we've been discussing, what's actually happening is that you're being accelerated in. But the thing is that if the seat belt and the friction with the seat and perhaps in extreme cases a normal force due to the door didn't stop you, you would go in a straight line and the car would accelerate without you. But the way your brain tends to interpret this is that it interprets the car as stationary and so the fact that you feel yourself thrown to the outside of the, of, of the curve relative to the car gets, in, gets turned by your brain into a sensation of a force acting that way, when in fact there is no such force. This is a force illusion caused by you being in an accelerating reference frame. We're going to have a whole video lecture on dealing with forces on objects in circular motion, but I think I'd better do an example right now just to show what I mean about identifying the forces, and that it's no different from what we've been doing. So let's think about this ball that I was whirling around my head on the string. And in particular, one of the first things we have to decide when we're going to draw a free body diagram for an object in circular motion, because the direction of its motion is changing continuously, it really matters what the perspective is in your drawing. You want to think of some instant in time and work with that perspective. Frequently, a good perspective is one where the object is coming out of the page at you, and you need to specify which way it is to the center of the circle. So let's go with this instant in the picture. Right here in this picture, the ball is coming out of the page at us, and the center of the circle is over here to the right. So I'll say that. And now I'm ready to draw the free body diagram, and I'm going to think about agents. Well, as always, we're near the Earth, and so there's going to be a gravitational force due to the Earth acting on the ball. And then what other agents is the ball in contact with? Well, the only thing touching the ball is the string. And so the only contact force we can possibly have acting on this ball will be the contact force by the string on the ball, which has to be directed along the direction of the string, and so roughly this way. And that's it. Those are all the forces that can possibly act on this ball. There can't be any others because there are no other objects that could be agents of forces on it. And what we know is that the vector sum of forces is to the center of the circle, or in other words, that the acceleration is in towards the center of the circle. And we're finished.